Hello everyone. So, this video. Now, you know me, I'm not controversial. I am also very much not drama. And I have toed and froed about whether I post something on this topic or not. But I have decided, quite simply, because I know that I would have wanted to hear what I'm about to say when I was in recovery. And the reason I started all of my sharing on social media around the topic of eating disorder recovery was because I wanted to share the stuff that I needed to hear when I was going through the process. This video is about something that has been shared by someone who is very well known in the recovery community and very, very well respected. And that is Tabitha Farrar. Now, I love Tabitha's work. She is somebody who was hugely influential in my own recovery journey. I recommend her resources, her books to all sorts of people, whether that is my coaches, whether that's people wanting to find out more about eating disorders, all sorts of people. I recommend those books too. I recommend her YouTube channel. I always really valued in my own journey her no-nonsense approach. Sometimes it was pretty tough to hear. Sometimes pretty like, oh, okay, that jars a little. But the truth is, in the place I was in, it helped to hear stuff just really straight. Just really like, this is how it is. This is what you need to do. And I value her influence in this field dramatically. However, it's come to my attention through a couple of coaches that recently there's been a couple of things shared, one on her website and one in a video recently that's just caused some confusion, I'd say. Now, I don't routinely watch recovery content any longer, but I did watch the video and where I can sit and really hear the nuance that Tabitha is sharing, I can also very much reflect and connect with the me who maybe would have listened to that inside my eating disorder and have heard a very different thing. I'm also aware on looking the thing on her website that it's there's no really there's no wiggle room in what's there. She's very much said what she said. And um, I just want to come on, not in a way of being confrontational, not in a way of causing drama, but just in a way to share a viewpoint to just add a bit of extra texture to those things that may be causing people concern. Number one, I do not agree that it takes on average six to eight weeks for extreme hunger or post-starvation hyperphagia to run its course. Now, in Tabitha's video, she herself references the fact that this is just an average, that actually everyone is different, that it can take much longer, it could take less time. And she herself also references the fact that doesn't want people's eating disorders to come in and see that as a ceiling and be like, right, no, that's it. I just want to add some extra context in here because I know that my extreme hunger actually blasted on pretty constantly for like 10 months before it started to ease off. And then it came back in splutters and starts. It came back really quite strongly after I had a not very nice uh, relapse. And then throughout my whole recovery journey, it was kind of on and off and on and off with increasing um, reduced intensity. But actually, extreme hunger was quite a dominant feature of my recovery journey. It definitely wasn't over within six to eight weeks. And I know that if I had been in the middle of that 10 month period, you know, if I'd been five months in, six months in and I had watched that, it would have just stuck with me a little bit. And again, I reference and I note that Tabitha makes point of this but I'm just wanting to share here that it's absolutely okay it is normal and natural if your extreme hunger is lasting longer than that period and I would actually say that for a lot of people it does take longer than that so that is my first point the second point that I really want to make is relating to on her website where she talks about coaching she sort of talks about this idea that uh, within six weeks, you can be out of the acute phase of recovery. Now, I'm going to be a bit more direct with this. 
I disagree. I fundamentally disagree with the idea that within six weeks, you can have done the vast majority of recovery work. I just don't agree. And there's no way I can kind of tiptoe around that. I just don't. I think that if people get really intentional and they fully commit to recovery, it can take a lot less time than evidence may suggest in terms of the years and years and years and years that people can take recovering. But I don't believe that people can do the whole journey within six weeks as a standard. Now, if you are someone who is listening to this and you're thinking, but I did, I did it that quickly, then hell yes to you. Go you. That is awesome. Nothing about what I'm sharing here is saying there's anything wrong with that. If you can do it in that time frame, that is incredible. That is amazing. You keep going. You keep going all the way to the very, very end out of that acute bit into the complete full recovery space. But what I am wanting to say is that it is entirely normal for recovery to take longer than that. Recovery is a three part process. You have got your weight restoration which is a phase that the body often accelerates through as rapidly as it can because your body's really smart and it wants to heal as quickly as it possibly can. You've then got that full nutritional rehabilitation, which is what makes the difference between the shell of a house being built and all of the internal work being done. You know, that full renovation of a property. That's like the difference between weight restoration and nutritional rehabilitation. And then on top of that, you have got the neural rewiring component, which actually we know does take generally about a year you know, if not one to two years for that full, complete neural rewiring process to occur. So I repeat, number one, it is entirely normal and natural and okay if your extreme hunger, your reactive hunger, your post-starvation hyperphagia, your feast eating, whatever you want to call it, the big recovery eating, if that is going on or has gone on or does go on longer than six to eight weeks, that's completely and utterly right, proper, normal. You can trust your body. Your body is the expert. Your body knows what it needs to be able to repay that energy debt and to get itself fully healed. Trust your body. And two, I disagree with the idea that recovery generally is done or the vast majority of it is done within the six week mark. Now, I'll put my hands up. Maybe I have misinterpreted what is written on her website. Maybe the people who have come to me with concern, which is what sparked me or spurred me to read the website, maybe we've all misinterpreted it. And if that's the case, I'll put my hands up and say, I'm sorry. But if what I think I'm reading is right, I just want you to know that it is perfectly normal and natural. And actually, I think it is kind of absurd to say that the full recovery process, the vast majority of that, the acute stage of the struggle can be done within six weeks. Because, you know, my experience was that actually the initial part of recovery was really hard. And then in terms of the struggle and the intensity and the support I needed, and then it got a bit easier in the middle. And then as I got later, later through the process, once I was weight restored and once I was still really, really hungry and eating loads and everyone thought I was fine and all of that and all the other kind of support started to just drip off that was the bit where actually I needed more support again and so the idea that within six weeks you can have just kind of done the vast majority of it no I disagree and as I say I'm not here for confrontation I'm not here for drama it's not not what any of this is about but I just know that if I was in recovery One, hearing the idea that in six weeks I should have been able to get out of the acute struggle would have made me feel like an utter failure and that I was doing it wrong and my eating disorder would have loved that. And the idea that my or the average extreme hunger should be done within six to eight weeks, that would have freaked me out big time because I was just getting hungrier at the six to eight week mark. Again, all of this is said with awareness of the nuance of this topic. It is impossible to touch on every different person's different lived experience in this huge journey of recovery in one video. But I'm sharing this for anyone who might resonate with how I know I would have felt. 
And I just want you to know you are not alone and that it's okay. It is absolutely okay. Keep going. Listen to your body. Every single step that you take away from your eating disorder is valid and valuable. The recovery journey is a roller coaster, and I know that only too well. It is absolutely not linear. It goes here, there, and everywhere, and that is okay. And your healing will take the time that your healing takes. All that I encourage you to do is to centre on your now, to look at where you are at in this moment, to think about the place that you want to get, and to focus in every single moment of how you can be closing the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And if you continue to do that with the resources that you have available in the way that feels accessible to you, then you will be moving towards and you will get to place of recovery. Anyway, on that note, I am going to sign out. I definitely feel a bit apprehensive sharing this. I'm not really sure why. I don't feel like I'm being confrontational, but I know that Anyway, I'm just going to sign out. I'm sure that you all understand where I'm coming from with this. And I just love you all. And I hope you have a wonderful day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And I will now head through because I think I can hear little Roka waking up. And so I better go and take her out. Anyway, 